Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, it is my honor to present to you Louis R. Chenevere, a distinguished business leader in the aerospace industry. Mr. Chenevere's career Mr. Shanover's career has been defined by a remarkable record of distinction and achievement. He was elected President and Chief Executive Officer of United Technologies Corporation in 2008 and Chairman in 2010. He held the position of President and Chief Operating Officer and served as a Director of United Technologies since March 2006. Guided by Mr. Shanover's energetic and visionary leadership, United Technologies is on the front line of innovation in building and aerospace technologies, assembling some of the most advanced jet engines in the world. As a diversified company, United Technologies products also include a range of industrial products, including Otis elevators and escalators, helicopters, fire and security systems all examples of engineering at work in industry. Davril Mil Nafsan Katrawang Disnaf, a Mars, the Mil says, Monsieur Shanwer a été président de Pratet Whitney. Awa de se joindre a cette entreprise en 1993, Monsieur Shanwer a travaillé pendant 14 ans pour General Motors. Où Il a résumé les fonctions de directeur général de la production à l'usine de Sainte-Thérèse. Monsieur Chenwa est membre du comité de direction de la Business Roundtable, dont il préside le groupe responsable de la politique fiscale, ainsi que du Business Council et du Forum des chefs de la direction États-Unis et he also serves on the board of directors for Cargill Inc. and the Congressional Medal of Honor Foundation and is chairman of the Yale Cancer Center's advisory board. In 2005, Shenworth was inducted as a fellow of the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, on behalf of Senate and the board of directors, it is my privilege and honor to present to you Louis R. Chenever. So that you may so that you may confer upon him the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. I'd like now to ask Dr. Chenever to make some remarks to the graduates. Mr. Chairman uh, of the Board of the Governors, uh, Mr. President Shepard, uh, distinguished guests, friends, colleagues, graduates, faculty, fellow Concordia uh, alumni, I'm honored to be here today. Let me congratulate, first of all, the class of uh, 2014 you should be extremely proud of your achievement. Grateful for the education you have received here in Concordia and excited about your future. And let me recognize all of the family members and friends who supported and encouraged the graduates. Your support really made today's day possible. I also want to congratulate the entire Concordia community on the 40th anniversary of the university's founding. Since 1974, Concordia has flourished into one of the world's great cosmopolitan universities. Many of you know I was born and raised here in Montreal 
and entered university back in 1974, just a couple minutes from here at HEC. You know, the world has changed a lot uh, since I entered uh, college and a lot uh, since uh, even you entered college. Like today, it was a time of uh, great promise, but also many challenges in front of us. Consider this, in 1974, the world saw its first pro programmable pocket calculator. A year later, in 1975, this same pocket calculator was carried into space on a joint U.S.-Soviet mission. This technology was of great importance for the astronauts. But by comparison, if you think about today, the smartphones that most of you all carry in your pocket has vastly more computer power than the initial calculator. And I know that as we speak, one of every five people on the planet today has a smartphone. I think about the world that's in front of us and for our industries, for example, only 16% of the world's population have yet been on a commercial airplane. And that's going to double in the next 20 years. There's about 50 to 60 million people urbanizing, which puts a smile on my face every day because that means we're going to build tall structures, they're going to demand elevators, air conditioners, security system. But that's the opportunities. And then if you think about the, the world today, about 220,000 new children are born. This is net every single day that will become consumers and create opportunities for those who are entrepreneurs and create products that the world demands in the future. You know, the pace of change since the founding of Concordia is absolutely remarkable. And the pace, in my view, is accelerating further every single day. As you embark on your career, you truly have an opportunity to change the world. The possibilities are endless for those who are willing to work hard, embrace change, and build strong, long-lasting relationships by inspiring people around them. If your experience has been anything like mine, I'm sure you've received a great deal of sound advice from the people in your life who care a lot about you and your future, from your parents, professors, career counselors, just to name a few. Let me add to that by offering three thoughts this morning as you begin your career, and I'll elaborate on them. Essayez de sortir de votre zone de confort. Soyez un participant et non un observateur. Rappelez-vous qu'en inspirant les gens autour de vous, vous réussirez à mobiliser des équipes de façon remarquable. Ne tolérez jamais des personnes qui drainent votre énergie et demeurez positif toujours face aux plus grands défis. Motivez les gens en démontrant votre passion et ce qu'il faut pour réussir. Soyez prêts à faire des sacrifices, car le succès n'est pas automatique. Il s'obtient au prix de beaucoup d'efforts, de longues journées de travail qui ne s'arrêteront pas nécessairement quand vous allez quitter le bureau, Vous allez souvent continuer à penser aux défis que vous relevez, non seulement à la maison, mais même les week-ends. Enfin, n'oubliez jamais les personnes et les institutions qui ont contribué à votre succès. Vous allez retirer une grande satisfaction en aidant les gens qui sont près de vous. You'll really never know how far you can go in life if you never move beyond your comfort zone. And that means a lot more than just moving out of the parents' basement. It means seeking global opportunities. As we have seen in the last few years, some of the biggest areas of economic growth have been outside North America, in rapidly developing countries and regions like China, India, Brazil, Middle East. As a matter of fact, I just prepare two weeks from now, I'll be on my 50th trip to China in the last 21 years. And this trend is going to continue and most likely accelerate in the decade ahead. As a result, those who are able to bring 
and bridge cultural gaps and connect with people of other geographies will continue to be in great demand. Lorsque je suis à la recherche de nouveaux leaders, je donne priorité toujours aux gens qui comprennent l'environnement mondial et qui travaillent en tenant compte de cette perspective. Je veux des gens qui ont acquis cette expérience sur le terrain dans le cadre de leur travail et qui ont vécu dans différentes régions du monde. These are truly tomorrow's leaders. People who will know how to engage their colleagues. Whether it's an accountant that's 30 meters away from you or an engineer that is 6,000 kilometers away from you. Concordia has prepared you very well for this adventure. I'm impressed that during the past decade, the number of international students at Concordia has grown by more than 150%, representing nearly every country around the world. And many of you took advantage of the opportunity to study abroad through Concordia's partnership with 100 institutions in 33 countries. As you begin your careers, you'll appreciate and benefit from your experience in such a diverse and international environment. Of course, pushing yourself beyond your comfort zone means more than just working in different countries. It means to welcome the difficult assignments. It means welcome the challenges. It means be open to trying something new. And if you do that, rest assured, it will get noticed. Someone will notice that they can trust you with difficult assignments and that you stay focused in any uncharted territory. Someone will realize that you can execute on very challenging projects, those projects that not everyone would have volunteered to do. And soon that someone will offer you the opportunity to lead a bigger team or own a more important project. Sortir de votre zone de confort signifie également travailler avec des personnes qui ont des expériences très différentes de la vôtre. Ce qui m'amène à mon deuxième point, apprendre à maîtriser l'art de rapprocher les gens. Chez United Technologies, nous sommes reconnus pour notre capacité d'innover. Plusieurs de nos entreprises ont été créées par des individus qui ont su transformer des industries avec des produits de la technologie novatrice qui ont vraiment changé le monde. Parmi ceux-ci, mentionnons Willis Carrier qui a inventé la climatisation moderne, Igor Sikorsky qui a lui seul perfectionné et produit l'hélicoptère tel qu'on la connaît aujourd'hui, tout près d'ici à Longueuil, Pratt et Whitney a développé une nouvelle génération de systèmes de propulsion et de turbopropulseurs sous la direction d'Elvis Smith, Dave Kaplan et Gilles Wimet. We are building on these rich legacies at UTC. And by the way, with the help of 350 Concordia alumni that worked or have worked over the years in our organization. In today's complex world, we find that our technological breakthroughs do not come from a single person, but from diverse teams working together to solve complex problems and bring innovative new solutions to the market. In other words, the ability to build successful teams is becoming an increasingly important competitive advantage. I learned that and I learned what I could accomplish through teamwork soon after graduating from HSC. I was very fortunate. While at GM in St. Therese, I was called upon to do a job that really I had no experience for at the time, which was supervising a team of 40 people on an assembly line. There I quickly learned that I had to trust the team. I could see that the people closest to the production line understood the system's weaknesses. I empowered them to develop solution, and guess what they did? They were proud of the work that they would do, and they were willing to engage, and they wanted to make a difference. All they needed from me was really guidance, leadership, a person that would support and show that you truly cared about the product and the outcome in their lives. This lesson has helped me over the past 35 years, and still does today as the CEO of the company with 220,000 employees. By, the, by getting employees on the assembly line to work together, and believe me, there were some very tough individuals 
who had bugged the dads in the past, but I was able to successfully lead them in this unexpected and daunting assignment. We were able to improve the process and deliver a better product for the customer, while at the same time increasing their sense of pride among the individuals as well as as a team. So, as you enter your professional world, regardless of what you do, I guarantee there will be others around you with competing interests, strong personalities, and even deep conviction that may seem totally incompatible with yours. Ceux qui sont capables de rapprocher les gens et de les mobiliser autour d'un objectif commun auront un avantage considérable. Le vrai succès, toutefois, appartient à ceux qui sont capables de s'entourer de personnes qui ont les talents, les compétences, les habiletés et les expertises qui surpassent les vôtres. La vraie question est donc la suivante. Serez-vous en mesure, un jour, d'embaucher des gens qui sont plus doués, plus brillants, plus rapides et plus créatifs que vous? My last piece of advice is always remember those who helped you succeed. You should be proud of yourselves today for what you've accomplished. But don't forget to thank those who helped you get here. Don't forget to thank your family, your friends, and those who have sacrificed to provide you with the opportunity to get an education and those who supported you during that time. N'oubliez pas de remercier vos professeurs, surtout les plus sévères, pour vous avoir bien préparé à affronter le monde dans lequel vous apprêtez à entrer. And thank those who challenge you to become who you are today. Take a moment to think about who this might be. It could be your neighbors from childhood, your first teacher, an athletic coach, your friends, and the people who challenge you because they truly saw your potential. And perhaps I should take my own advice and thank the people who have influenced my life. Ma famille, en commençant par ma mère, en commençant par ma femme Debbie de 34 ans, euh, qu'on est ensemble, ainsi que mes amis. Mes collègues, dont plusieurs sont ici aujourd'hui, de Pratt Canada, où j'ai eu le privilège de travailler avec eux et apprendre beaucoup, et euh, une équipe fantastique. Mes professeurs, euh, les enseignants, so besides being grateful, there's another reason that you need to remember those who helped you succeed. You will succeed in your career only to the extent that somebody else is taking a chance on you, giving you the extra hard assignment, the task that sometimes seem unsurmountable, or the project that so far nobody has been able to bring to success. I could tell you, I'm only here today because someone, in fact, perhaps more than one, took a chance on me during my career. So my advice to you is, remember at the right time that taking a chance on someone unleashes the best in that individual and will help him or her excel to absolutely new heights. So as we prepare to leave here today, and you get ready to enter the next step in your career. Don't forget that with your degree, you've also earned new responsibilities. Take an active role in communities. Support the institution that will educate and develop the next generation of leaders. And remember that we all have an obligation to leave a better world to the next generation. Merci. Pour cet honneur, thank you very much for this wonderful honor. It's a pleasure to share this day with you, and I wish you the best of luck and great success in your future career. Thank you very much. Dr. Chenevert, we are 
very proud that hundreds of Concordia graduates already work for the companies of United Technologies. I can recommend several engineers and computer scientists this morning who would probably like to join those growing ranks. Thank you so much for your uh, inspiring words uh, about passion, about bridging cultural geographies, which I think Concordia does brilliantly, and about um, being aware enough when someone's taking a chance on you to deliver so that you have that opportunity that they have given you. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your allocution.